Hello everyone, Mr. Schultz here. We're going to be talking about Integrated Math 2, Notes 3-5, which is Triangle Proportionality. Let's write that in. Triangle. Don't forget to put your first and last name here and your period number. Alright, so if this is the Triangle Proportionality Theorem. If a line is parallel to one side of a triangle and intersects the other two, then it divides the sides into segments of proportional lengths. Well, what does this mean? All right, well, let's look at example one. So we know that AB is 12 right here. All right, cool, cool, cool. So that's from here to here. But from A to C, it's going to be 16. So let's write it down. Let's write in all the information. And then it says, hey, we want to know what this is. Well, we can pretend this is like small triangle, small triangle to big triangle. So let's do it. We can see that, hey, so we can take this and say, hey, this is going to be AB over, so small, small right side to the triangle over AC will equal, let's say, AE over A to D. Okay, cool. So if we wrote that out, this would actually be 12 over 16 is equal to AE, X, and from A to D, that would be X plus 5. All right, cool, cool, cool. So I can simpl simplify this 12 over 16 by dividing by 4 on the top and the bottom, and I get 3 fourths. Now I can go go ahead and and I can do this cross product right here. So I'm going to multiply this right here and this right here. So when I multiply this out, I get 3 times the quantity x plus 5 is equal to 4 times x. Using the distributive property, we get 3x plus 15 is equal to 4x. Now we need, just needed the subtraction property of equality on both sides, and we get x is equal to 15. All right, let's go on. So now we're going to talk about the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem. This means that if a line intersects two sides of a triangle, and separates the sides into proportional corresponding segments, then the line is parallel to the third side of the, of the triangle. So we're going to use the triangle proportions to determine if lines are parallel. So they're saying, hey, we want to check this. Is NR parallel to PQ? All right, well, we can pretty much say, hey, this is going to be CN is going to be over NM. And we can make that equal to QR is going to be over RM. So now we, get, we have a couple different things. It says, hey, look, this PM is, we can say this label, this is X, and it says this P. This uh, PM is 4PN, so if the whole thing is 4X, and this little part is X, then this has to be 3Xs for MN. So I can write this in. I can, I'm, it's, we're comparing things with saying, hey, comparing to this one side. So we can write this out is equal to QR. Well, QR says, doesn't know, but I know QM is 31, and RM is 21. So that means QR should be 10. All right, well, if I divide this out, I get 1 third is equal to 10 over 21. Does this fraction, is this a proportional equation right here? No, they're, they're not equal. So therefore, NR cannot be parallel to PQ. These would have to be equal to each other. All right, let's go on. 
All right, so learn mid segments and parallel lines. So a mid segment of a triangle, so let's write that in. A mid segment of a triangle is a segment that connects the midpoints of the legs of the triangle. Every triangle has three mid segments. So that looks right here. It's like, hey, look, J, K are at mid segments. So that means that J, K is going to be half of F, G. So if F, G right here is 4, J, K has to be 2. So I'm looking at this. Here's an example. V, R, V, Z, and Z, R are mid segments of U, triangle U, W, Y. Find the value of X. So we know that this is a mid segment right here. So what we're going to do is we could use the, th the theorem. We know that ZR is going to be half of UY. We know that ZR is 25. So what property is it? It's the S property, not the switcheroo, but the substitute pro property, substitution property. And UY is X. So, half of x. Half of what equals 25? Well, if you, you don't know, that's okay. Let's get rid of this times a half by multiplying by 2 on both sides. And then we'll get our result of 50 is equal to x. All right. So, this was the triangle mid-segment theorem. All right. We're on page 2 of 3. Let's go on to the next part. So, example 4. Use proportional segments of transversals. So this one's kind of cool. If three or more parallel lines intersect two transversals, then they cut the transversals proportional. So this is pretty much the same. Hey, look, this is going to be this over this top one over the bottom one is going to be equal to the top one over the bottom one. All right, well, let's go on. I like this one, this example right here, because it's we can make the pretend saying, hey, look, there's this pretend third line right here that's going to be proportional right here. So, in Nico's town, K Street and Bay Street are parallel. Find the value of X, the distance from K Street to Bay Street along Pearl Street. All right, well, they're asking, what's this? Well, knowing this, I can write this as a proportion. We have this third parallel line right here. It's like an invisible parallel line. It's a point. They all meet at this one point. That's okay. So I'm going to write this. I want x on the top. So I'm going to put x over 1.4 kilometer is equal to 1 kilometer under 0 0.8 kilometer. So now I can do just simplify. And now I can cancel this, and 0.8 divided by 1 is 0 0.8. So I have 0 0.8 is equal to x over 1.4 kilometers. Well, now with this, all I need to do is I need to multiply by 1.4 kilometers on both sides. When I multiply by 1.4 kilometers, I'm going to get... Using my handy dandy calculator, I get 1.12. But wait, I'm missing something. I wasn't multiplied by 1.4, I was multiplied by 1.4 kilometers. So I'm going to write camp. So Earl Street right there is going to be 1.12 kilometers. Kilometers. All right, guys. We have our last page coming up. Let's go on. So example five, use congruent segments of transversals. This is our very last one. Basically what it's saying is, hey, if B and C, like AB to BC is congruent, they're saying, hey, this EF to FG is going to be congruent as well. This is like the proportion thing, but it's going to be a scale factor of one. So basically, it says, hey, find the values of x and y. Well, 
I know that these are congruent with each other, so I can go over here and write 2x plus 1 is equal to x plus 7. And now I can solve for x by subtracting, using the subtraction property of equality, getting x plus 1 is equal to 7. Well, then I'm going to subtract by 1 on both sides, and I get x is equal to 6. Okay, well, that's, that's easy in comparison to this, but it's not. Since we know that these are three parallel lines right here, and that the segments are congruent, well then we know that these are congruent because of the congruent parts of parallel lines. So now I can rewrite this as 3y minus 8 is equal to y plus 5. And we can subtract on both sides and get y slowly by itself. So if we subtract by y, we get 2y minus 8 is equal to 5. Add 5 to both sides and we get 13 is equal to 2 1. Okay, well now just divide by 2 on both sides and we get y is equal to 6.5. And maybe we want to say units, maybe we don't. Alright guys, we're at 11 minutes, so hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye.